glittering waters and sands. This is the Sea of Japan in summer. Its beaches provide relief from the heat. However, these peaceful scenes change with the arrival of typhoon season between summer and autumn. Winter's high waves alter their appearance even further. Large amounts of plastic litter are washed ashore. Currently, the world's oceans contain an estimated 150 million tons of plastic litter, with 8 million tons added every year. Should the situation continue, the oceans of the world are expected to contain more plastic waste than fish by 2050. The issue of marine plastic litter was addressed at the G20 Riyadh Summit held online in November 2020. There, G20 leaders reaffirmed the need to realize the Osaka Blue Ocean vision, which Japan proposed at the G20 Osaka Summit in 2019 and aims to reduce additional pollution by marine plastic litter to zero by 2050. In Japan, initiatives against single-use plastics have recently been gaining traction. In this program, we'll visit three regions along the Sea of Japan and take a look at how the local residents, both old and young, are working to save their pristine shores. The Sea of Japan. Its coastal regions are struggling with the large amounts of marine plastic litter brought in from neighboring areas and countries by tides and seasonal winds. This program features Goto City in Nagasaki Prefecture, Tsuruga City in Fukui Prefecture, and Hakui City in Ishikawa Prefecture. Our first stop is Goto City, Nagasaki Prefecture. Made up of over 60 islands, it's home to approximately 37,000 people. Fukue Island is its central hub. Goto City's greatest charms are its breathtaking landscapes and clear blue waters. This is Takahama Beach. With its fine white sand set against the water's blue, it's been called the most beautiful beach in Japan. Beneath the water's surface is a wealth of fish and coral, making it a popular diving spot. Delicacies from the sea are also a major highlight in Goto. Goto which once served as a bridge to the Asian continent, contains numerous sites that bear witness to the arrival of the Christian faith and culture during the 16th and 17th centuries. In 2018, two villages within the city were inscribed as UNESCO World Heritage Sites. This is Abunze Coast. It was formed by lava flowing into the sea. The area around it is filled with subtropical plants, making it a unique tourist attraction. However, here too, a lot of marine litter clutters the shore. It's just one of the many places along the beautiful Goto coastline, blemished by washed up litter. In the summer of 2020, a local MPO held a beach cleanup in Goto City. In rural areas with declining birth rates and aging populations, 
the cleanups are performed mostly by senior citizens. I want our grandchildren and future generations to enjoy the sight of clean waters with swaying seaweed and swimming fish. That's what keeps me going. The one-hour cleanup resulted in 60 large bags of trash. We know that the trash won't stop washing up. It'll come in with the next breeze or typhoon. But if we collect what's here, it won't go elsewhere. That's our motivation, to stop it here. Goto's population continues to age. But in recent years, young people drawn to its charms have begun moving in. One of them is Okamoto Yoshitaka, who works as a hotel manager. He relocated to Goto in 2018. Today, he's organizing a beach cleanup and is joined by others who've made Goto their home. This is Takasaki Beach. It's a small gem with emerald waters and white sands. Yet this beautiful beach would also be overrun by marine debris if left unattended. Although Goto's nature was what attracted us, I think the locals have grown used to the sight of marine debris on the beach. But it's such a beautiful place. So we wanted to do something about the debris. The new residents are helping to shoulder the burden in the local area. However, each rough wave brings in new trash. And their cleanups, which are held several times a month, are not enough to keep up. This grave situation has continued for many years. This is the Ishida Castle site. Built in the late 19th century, it was the last castle constructed in Japan. Located on the site is Goto High School. It's the end of a school day. A young man jogs familiarly into the school. His name is Miyazaki Kota. A former student here, he currently studies at a university in another prefecture. He became interested in the issue of marine litter while in high school. Uh, when I, I went for a drive with my dad, a lot of trashes were washed up on the beach. I used to think that the beach on the Goto Island was very beautiful, uh, but I was so shocked by the current situation that I wanted to save the sea on Goto Island. So I studied these activities. Forming a group with his high school classmates, he began participating in beach cleanups and proactively disseminating information on the internet and social media about marine plastic litter. The group's activities gained national attention and were awarded the Minister of the Environment Award in 2019. While he has his studies at university, Miyazaki is still actively involved in environmental activities. He organizes beach cleanup events and also shares information online with students across the country with the aim of solving the issue of marine plastic litter. New initiatives are also being held to disseminate information about Goto City's struggle with marine litter. One is beach surveys using drones. Meticulous groundwork is performed beforehand to acquire accurate data.
For this project, nine spots along the coast that receive an influx of marine litter are regularly filmed using a drone. By analyzing the data gathered by the drone, the project aims to quantify the amount of marine litter and share Goto City's plight. When I think about our future in Goto, we will not be able to sustain our beautiful beaches if we don't take action right now. I wanted some, some of the uh, visitors of website to take action of some sort to help maintain our beautiful scenery in Goto. By releasing footage of the drone surveys, Hamamoto hopes to get people interested in the issue and to encourage actions that will contribute to a reduction in plastic waste. Tsuruga City, Fukui Prefecture, faces the Sea of Japan. It once thrived as a key trade port and has been the stage of many historical events. November 3rd, 2020. The Port of Humanity Tsuruga Museum reopened following renovations. And a ceremony was held to commemorate the event. A century ago, in 1920, when civil war broke out in Siberia following the Russian Revolution, Japan took in Polish children who had lost their families and were placed in dire straits. Tsuruga port is where the 763 orphans came ashore. Then, in 1940, during the Second World War, Japanese diplomat Sugihara Chiune issued what have come to be known as visas for life. His decision saved countless Jewish refugees who made landfall in Tsuruga port. The Port of Humanity Tsuruga Museum was built to preserve the memory of these events for future generations. The scenic beauty of Tsuruga City's coastline refreshes and rejuvenates those who visit. I think it's been two or three years now. I come here every week whenever I have a day off. Nago Tomohiro works at a company in Tsuruga City. He enjoys free diving on the weekend. I get to see the fish down there. It's very relaxing. His regular outings also brought a disturbing revelation. To get to the water, I have to pass through areas strewn with plastic trash. There's a crunching sound with each step. There's garbage everywhere, plastic bottles, shoes, all kinds of stuff. So I try to collect some on my way home. Becoming aware of the issue of marine plastic litter, he began periodically visiting different beaches within the city. This is Tanoura Beach, Said to be one of the best beaches in the city, it gets lively during the summer months. Yet, it too is not exempt from ocean waste. 
Whenever he has spare time, Nago comes down to the beach to collect trash. This is Shiraki Coast. The waves become rough in winter, bringing in large amounts of plastic litter. The sea is rough from January to March, and it brings in waves of garbage. Marine debris gathered from the beach is temporarily kept here and collected at a later date by a cleaning company. In Tsuruga City, a portion of the marine plastic litter is effectively utilized. But it's a labor-intensive process. Kondo Tomonori is from a private cleaning company. The trash placed here is unsorted. So part of our job is to sort it by type. For example, waste plastics, ropes, and such. It's a time-consuming task, to say the least. Overseeing the process is city official Kumano Katsunori. People in the community can help with garbage collection. But the most difficult part is actually sorting it correctly and disposing of it properly. That's the greater problem. This waste treatment plant is located in a neighboring town. Of the marine litter brought in, the waste plastic will be converted into fuel. First, the plastic is crushed. It's then finely ground and extruded as thin chips. Once the chips are compressed and cooled, the solid fuel pellets made out of plastic litter are complete. Because the plastic has been soaking in seawater, it often contains salt and other contaminants, making it difficult to reuse. Turning it into fuel seems to be our best option. Faced with the dilemma of plastic waste disposal, many local governments in Japan are resorting to landfills and incineration. Converting plastic litter into fuel reduces landfill waste and is an effective way to utilize it. However, the required labor and costs remain issues. The best is recycling. And I'm hopeful that there will be advances in plastic recycling technologies. Until then, we'll keep on collecting the plastic litter that washes up and doing what we can to keep the coast clean. As solid fuel made from marine plastic litter produces CO2, it's not an ideal solution. It highlights the need for both improved recycling technologies and a reduction in the amount of plastic that ends up in the ocean. Hakui City, Ishikawa Prefecture, has a population of approximately 20,000. It's a town where traditional Japanese culture is still very much in evidence. This is Keta Taisha Shrine. Its name is mentioned in the Manyoshu, the oldest collection of poems in Japan, compiled during the 7th and 8th centuries. And this is Chirihama Nagisa Driveway, 
It's the only beach in Japan where vehicles can drive on the sand. The beach stretches out for 8 kilometers and is one of Ishikawa Prefecture's most famous sites. Next to it is Shibagaki Coast, a popular surfing spot. Surfers come from near and far in hopes of catching a big wave. Chino Takao is a resident of Hakui City. Maybe two or three times a week. If the waves are good, I'll come before work. I'm here from the morning on my day off. Yet the high waves that surfers enjoy also carry in large amounts of marine plastic litter. Unable to bear the sight, surfers have been cleaning the beach for the past 20 years. Thanks to their efforts, most of Shibagaki coast remains relatively clean. However, the outlying areas remain untended. And the marine debris is hard to ignore. A group of 30 people, including university students, gather at Shibagaki Coast. They're here to participate in a marine debris survey hosted by Ishikawa Prefecture. To grasp the full scale of the issue, Ishikawa Prefecture is moving to collect trash and categorize them by type, amount, and place of manufacture. During the collection process, the trash is divided into five categories. Plastic bottles, other plastics, glass, ceramics, and metals, natural objects such as driftwood, and items that don't fall into any of the other categories. There are so many types of garbage. I think it'll be difficult to sort them all. There were plastic items with foreign labels and lettering on them. We also found some really big pieces. That took me by surprise. Overseeing the survey is Professor Ikeda Yukio from Kanazawa Seiryo University. He's been involved in Ishikawa Prefecture's marine environment conservation efforts for many years. Ishikawa has close ties to the sea. I want young people, those who will lead the next generation, to become familiar with the environment, participate in activities like this, and pass on the knowledge to their children. Here, the garbage collected from the beach is divided even further. They're first sorted into the 10 categories established by the Ministry of the Environment. The plastics are then divided into another 20 categories. The survey revealed that plastic waste made up roughly 84% of the total count and 60% of the total volume. The breakdown showed that fishing nets, ropes, buoys, and other fishing implements made up the greater part of the total volume. Meanwhile, an examination of the collected plastic bottle caps provided the following data. 19.1% were manufactured in China and Taiwan, 17.6% in South Korea, and 14.7% in Japan. Professor Ikeda Yukio hopes to keep the big picture in mind. The idea isn't to point fingers at the country of origin because it's a human-made problem. The countries may be different, but the entire world is connected. So I'm hoping that everyone will come together to protect our beautiful oceans. 
Another event was held together with a survey. The releasing of juvenile fish. This year, 1,000 black sea bream fry were released into the sea. The event was organized by Clean Beach Ishikawa, which has worked to protect Ishikawa's marine environment for the past 25 years. By connecting children and young people with nature from a young age, I hope we can instill in them a love of nature and make them aware of how valuable the ocean is and how important it is to keep our shores clean. This is Noto Town, also located in Ishikawa Prefecture. At this elementary school, classes are held to teach the children about the importance of the ocean and raise awareness regarding environmental issues. Today, they're taking a field trip to a local beach. There, they collect trash that's drifted ashore and sort them by type and material. Back at school, each group compiles their findings and prepares a presentation. Dirty seas are bad for the creatures that live in them, the fishermen, and a lot of other people. I learned that the sea is full of trash, and I want to help get rid of it. So I'll do what I can. I'll pick up trash and not throw things away. Some are organizing beach cleanups, while others are using new technology to disseminate information. Some are trying to utilize marine plastic litter by converting it into fuel while struggling with the dilemma of disposal. Others are working to investigate the situation and use the data to stem the tide of marine litter. What all these people have in common is a strong desire to raise awareness regarding the need to reduce waste and save their pristine shores for future generations. This program was made possible by the Government of Japan.